TV4, Extraordinary Television, the Community Television Network. My name is Michael Connolly, and I teach a course in Modern Irish History and Literature at the University of Southern Maine in Portland. About 100 years ago, the Irish longshoremen of Portland formed what was one of Maine's first industrial labor unions. That union was active between 1880 and 1980 when the waterfront work died out along Portland's waterfront and the Bath Iron Works moved in to the Maine State Pier. This program is an interview with four of the ex-Irish longshoremen who worked on the Portland waterfront. They include Larry Welch, Pat O'Malley, Philip Foley, and Steve Kincannon, all of Portland. This interview will be some of the reminiscences of these four workers, especially in the era of the 1920s and 1930s, when the Port of Portland was bustling. Enjoy with me now the reminiscences of these four Irish longshoremen. Philip Foley is 98 years old. He and his wife, Nan Connolly Foley, live on York Street in Portland's West End. Philip was born in 1891 in Chockmore in the Cushariga region of County Galway, Ireland, and emigrated to Portland before World War I. In this short interview, Philippine recalls work on the old Grand Trunk grain elevators for the Portland Longshoremen Benevolent Society and working in the gang led by Mike Jennings along with other Galway-born longshoremen. When you first came over here in 1911, why did you decide on Portland rather than Boston or New York? And my sisters to see it. What had they been telling you about Portland? They were telling me this. I was crazy to leave home. They didn't encourage you to come here at all? No. My brother was out here, and then and they were no, he went over. Uh-huh. And what did, you, what did you do for work when you first arrived in Portland? Uh, I worked in the grain elevator. Down at the Grand Trunk? Grand, on the Grand Trunk. All the English ships oh. used to come in there. They can go to Canada, then you know. Yes. It was during the winter time mostly, was it? Oh, yeah. Now that's when the when the St. Lawrence River was frozen. Yeah, oh yeah. And they shipped the grain out of Portland. Yeah. Now you worked there for a good few years at the grain elevators. Thirteen years. And where did you go from there? La Longshore. Longshore. Were you a member of the Portland Longshoremen Benevolent Society? Oh, I know them world people. Did you join the union? Oh yeah. And so you were a union member. Yeah. Did you ever know my grandfather Coleman? Coleman Fat. Coleman Connolly. The Lamb. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you work with him there on Longshore? No, I didn't work on my, it was another gang. He had a gang, you know. Yes. What kind of a gang did you get into on Longshore? Oh, it was uh, Mike Jennings. Was Mike Jennings the gang boss in yeah, the group that yeah, you worked yeah. in? Where were you living at the time, Philippine? Right on Spring Street. On Spring. And what, how would you describe the neighborhood that you were living in? Were there mostly Yankees, or uh, who was living there? At oh, the time? there was all Irish. Uh, and wh what parts of Ireland were they from? Oh, God, where the most of them. Were they? Cork, some of them. Uh huh. Was there much Irish spoken in the neighborhood? Oh, yeah. That's all you hear in Longshore then. 
All I was working there, you're talking Irish. Really? Yeah. Steve Concannon is 88 years old. He lives on Grant Street in the West End in, of Portland. Steve was born in 1900 in Derry Lochon near Spittle in County Galway, Ireland. Steve was brought to Portland by his uncle in the early 1920s and worked construction and longshore. In this interview, he remembers working on the China clay boats along with a mostly Galway-born gang of longshoremen who were, according to Steve, both rugged and healthy. What did you do for work in addition to construction? In, uh, in the summertime, you know, we used to work for the water company and I worked for the gas company, but in the wintertime, uh, you know, mostly we used to work longshore. That was, of course, when the sh longshore was booming here for a couple of years, at least 1922, 23, it was very busy down at the, uh, you know, down at the Grand Trunk there. There used to be, in 1922 especially, uh, I would say there was sometimes the 16 ships, uh, uh, merchant ships in there, you know, at times. And of course, most of the goods that they were shipping over to England was coming from Canada. Uh, in the line of grain, beef, and cheese, and, and mostly all Canadian stuff that was uh, shipped over from, from here. What was it like to be a longshoreman at that time? Really, I, I enjoyed it, you know, because to be a longshoreman, you know, for example, is, uh, you have to be rugged enough and healthy enough to do little lifting, you know. Uh, you know, once you, you are on the job, uh, you were always free to talk, you know. I mean, the boss didn't mean anything to you as long as you did your work there. Let's say you were working, in the old days, they worked on a clay boat, and there was four big tubs. And each tub had, uh, there was eight men in the hole, down the hole, and each tub had two men. Well, now, as long as you had your tub of clay filled, if you did that, then you were free to talk as long as, because the sling came along, you know, and picked up this one that, you know, and came to you. So uh, as long as uh, the boss, that was uh, one of the privileges along shore, is that they could talk and kid and... and uh, uh, Did you talk in Irish or in English to oh, your in friends? Oh, in Irish, my, my, uh, mostly all in Irish all the time, because all the people you did work with this practically all spoke Gaelic, you know. I mean, at that time, they were from Connemara, from Cashar, you know, as they call it. But, uh, what other know, regions of Ireland uh, were people from here in Portland? Um, well, I would say, you know, that, uh, that mostly very few of them came from any part that I know of, uh, with the exception of, uh, there was very few, for example, that came from Roscommon. And it, it was mostly, let's say, even if they were maybe like girls now, you know, do, do, who did domestic work for Yankees back in the Western Prom. Like Mary O'Shea now, she used to, uh, you, uh, you, you don't remember, she used to work for, uh, for Flaherty, the undertaker there. She came from Roscommon. But most of the girls and, and boys that came, they all came from Galway here and settled down here, you know. Larry Welch was born in Portland in 1902, the son of Joe Welch of Half Mace and Mary Loftus of Dynish Letter Mullen, both of which are in the Irish-speaking Gaeltacht region of County Galway, Ireland. Larry lived most of his life on Munjoy Hill and now resides in Yarmouth with his wife Ethel. Here, Larry talks about the Italian freight handlers, prohibition, nicknames, and anti-Irish and anti-Catholic bigotry in Portland. Did the ethnic groups get along well together in Portland? More or less. Didn't mix too much. I mean, I got along all right, which played with mostly Italian kids. And mostly Italian kids down there. What about longshore work? Did the ethnic groups mix very well? <laughs> no, there was very few. And, uh, but Irish, you know. You had to be Irish practically, I guess. It was two Polish. Bullocks, we call them. There was no Italian. There was one Italian they called the Kaiser family, but before that it was all Irish. Mostly when I went down there, it was uh, Irish from the old sod. Uh, very few natives. And then the, after I was in there, there was more and more natives because the, the other Irish were, were dying out or getting old or something. So the native-borns would have been second-generation Irish-Americans, mm -hmm. mo mostly. 
What about the freight handling work? They were all Italians, except one winter when the <coughs> Green and Maloney stole it away from them. Well, I don't know uh, whether that's the right word, but they got it on contract. And I guess, of course, the uh, freight handlers didn't have any uh, union then had some kind of an organization, but it wasn't a, uh, an ILA union till later. And uh, Green and Maloney got the contract, and I guess they lost money. They paid the longshore wages, which, which uh, put them on the bum, I guess, because before that, the railroad was only paying a hell of a lot less. What year would that have been? Well, that's before I went down there. That must have been, um, I'd say, I guess maybe 1916 or something like that. Quite a while before I went there. In that neighborhood of uh, the east end of Portland, were there any places that you like to hang out and just to uh, have conversation? Well, when I was very young or later? Later when on. I well, we used to hang around uh, your uncle's pool room a lot. Where was that located? Corner four in India. That big house there, he owned that house. That is a big Describe that, that building. It was a three, big three flatter. He had it built. He had rooms there and there was a few, uh, few rooms there. John Johnny and Maddie Conley and Poopy Conley, a number of them. Your grandmother was the boss, like she was your uncle's, your uncle's mother, of course. And then they on the lower floor and right on the corner, this big, uh, big room with the with the bath. They sold near beer up there and. Uh, what was that? What was pool that? room on the other side with three and four tables. See, it was a regular social center. Like trouble was that the, in the in the, later on deteriorated into the, the the woodsmen come when the when the woods closed up in the fall. I guess it was they come down. They were all lousy. In fact, I got lousy myself one. I did. It was awful body lice there. Just. We used to hang around there in between. That's before I joined the union, even. Eh? What did you mean by near beer? Well, there, there was prohibition in Portland. They had beer that was half of 1% or something. They call it near beer. Was that legal? That was, yeah, because it was like a soft drink. You know, there was no alcohol content amount or anything in it. How did the Irish get around prohibition at the time? <laughs> It was all kind of kitchen, bar room, speakeasy. Italian people all sold wine. And there was the bootlegger started. Some of them would bring in the good stuff. You know, the prohibition, they read all about that stuff. Was there any alcohol coming into Portland at the time during prohibition aboard the ships? No, it was brought in out. On small on the lobster smacks would bring it in from uh, the bigger ship out there. They call rum and roll. You read all about that in Prohibition. Eh? Did you ever see any bonded uh, alcohol coming into Oh, Oh, it used to be. We once, uh, I once worked on a uh, uh, ship from Scotland with 30,000 cases of the best scotch in the world. All the best brands that were in transit to Canada come in on bond, it was put right into boxcars, sealed up, you know, shipped up to Canada. That's, <laughs> that's where the longshoremen went wild there. And our gang, Coley Green's gang, we were doubled up with, with some of the other gang. And Jesus, they had to knock us off every afternoon. Everybody was drunk. It was a mess that cra crashed the cases. Wooden cases then, no more, no cartons. <laughs> Jesus, at the end of the ship, they had a pile of debris, all broken wooden cases and bottles. They had 
they had cops watching it down there. They put cops with guns down there one time, and the longshoreman walked off the job. It was a hell of a time there. We used to get one of those probably once a winter. All the booze would go up to Canada, supposedly, anyway. But the longshoreman didn't steal. If you could steal any of it, of course, you were, that was your prerogative, the longshoreman. When I you stole a couple of bottles of, of scotch. I don't know what kind of white hot cellar or some good brand. It was all good brands, the best export. When you were working on your gang, you were a native born yourself, born mm -hmm. here in the States. I was the only native in that gang. What are some of the nicknames that you had uh, for the Irish born? Well, in that gang, the White Hope worked there, Little Martin McDonough. And there was Kasharaga Mike was working. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember any other. Did you have any names that you called the Irish born themselves? Well, derogatory names, you mean? Some of the wise, wise guys, I never did. I always got along because I worked with them. I knew they were all relatives of mine, mostly, our first cousin. But so my brother Joe and them, they got meatheads. They called them meatheads. You know, they thought they were so goddamn smart. And the Irish were supposed to be stupid, you know. Did they have any names for the, uh, for the people that were born in this country? Oh, yeah. Unshooks. My father used to call me an Unshook. Punk on. The natives, they called us. The natives. They had a little, little feeling, too. After all, it was back and forth, I guess. You know. Was corner boy a term that was used? No, that that's an Irish. You know, that was never used that I know of. You know, the monks themselves, they might have mm -hmm. caught us. The lads. Billy Sunday used to call us the lads. Where's the lads? <laughs> did you get along pretty well with uh, most of the Irish born? Yeah, I did. Did I you did. notice any difference between them and <clears throat> the uh, American born longshoremen? Well, of course, they, they had a brogue, you know. And, but I mean, they had arms and legs and all that, but uh, there was no radical difference, I mean. Usually were bigger. Usually were bigger guys. Did the Irish have any nicknames for the Yankees back then? Oh, narrowbacks, they called them. Where did that word come from? I don't know. That's before my time. My father said the narrowbacks. I guess it come from the English in Ireland. They were all tall and angular, I guess. Maybe that's where it, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the um, the place called uh, McCarthy's. Well, it was a little smoke shop with it, very small, just cigarettes, pipe, pipe tobacco, chewing tobacco, candy. Just a little small neighborhood store with a back room with a big pot belly store with benches around, sit there and talk and meet. There was some pretty good conversation going on there at times with your father and Patty Connor. That was a, I told you Cochran, didn't I? Mm. Connor. He, he had uh, sons that taught in school, Tom Connor. Uh, Patty Cochran was a <coughs> another Irish and lived on the hill that was uh, worked in the baggage room of the Grand Trunk, or a black, a black coat, black suit, and derby hat. Very dignified type. Nice fella, Patty Cochran. But Pat Patty Connor was the guy that was really uh, <coughs> a little bit advanced. Uh, he was more like a native. Were the Irish a proud bunch of people, would you say, in Portland? No, not particularly proud, no. No. How did the there neighborhood... There was a lot of... A lot of uh, small stuff, jealousy, things like that. 
just like Ireland, they're poorer class and they're, you know, jealous of one another. One of, well, for one thing you notice, if you were a little, here's a very bad thing about, if you were a little uh, ambitious and you try to get as much work as you can, they call you hungry. And if you didn't, you were a bum. <laughs> you couldn't please, they were kind of narrow, all right, that way. Yeah. And Larry, Haley there, the Haley's up in the hill, you heard of the Haley. They called him Hungry Haley because he, he was a go-getter, you know, in a way. He, he, worked, he was a fireman and then he'd, he stayed in the Longshore Union and he used to fill in on, on uh, when there was a rush, you know. Hungry Haley, Hungry Haley. If you, if you got too much work, <laughs> you were hungry. That was one one narrow part of them. But I, I think as a class, as a union union people, uh, the uh, the Irish from the old sod were hell of a long ways ahead of the natives that were here. When they gradually got up and took care of took over the union, they 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 weren't uh, they weren't too good union in it a lot. Did something go out of the union when the second generation took well, it over? The work was dying out. It was dying out probably about the time that uh, Pat here got down there, 26. was starting to taper off then. There wasn't good times after that. Mm. Well, what about the Irish neighborhoods? Did they, did they stay Irish neighborhoods for a long time, or did you notice mm, they started they, to change? They gradually started, like all cities they started. They, when they started accumulating a few bucks, you know, they moved to a better section. You start to get ahead in the world, learning. You know, the next generation got a better job. They, a lot of them become cops and postal clerks. And Where did the Irish move when they moved out of the old Well, neighborhood? first they started going above the brewery yard into Waterville Street and St. Lawrence, and then over on uh, uh, of course, they, they took over Kellogg and Sheridan, that whole section. And then uh, a lot of the Jewish people started, and the Irish started going somewhere else. That was later years, as you know how they evolved. No particular year or anything, or nothing big happened. I know. I, I wasn't around there a lot. I worked out Detroit, and I worked. Uh, Free surgery all over the the Midwest, out as far as Minnesota, went down south and worked there, and, and spent a whole year down in New Orleans. Twice uh, I was in Detroit, and then I was worked around in uh, in Rochester, New York. So I was out of Portland quite a lot. Do you remember a lot of the characters down? working longshore or the characters in the Irish neighborhood back then? People that you would refer to as characters? Tell, tell well, uh, Doughty Kane was considered a character. Dan Kane and uh, lovely Mike, of course, was notorious. Frank Toole was considered a little bit of a clown supposedly, but he was pretty smart money-wise, I noticed. And uh, the shag, it was a big Martin Foley. Martin was it? Yeah. Marcus, Marcus Sheen Bond was another. He was kind of a good-sized drunk. Do you have any stories about and, uh, Dowdy Kane, Larry? Well, except about the church there, you know. About him. And it was a bubble, the world is a bubble. Tell me that story, if you would. Well, he was a, a priest who was up in the pulpit, but the Sunday preaching, I guess. And I guess Doughty was half in the horrors. He used to drink all the time. All of a sudden, he jumped up. Ah, he says, what the hell are you talking about? He says, sure, the world is a bubble. He says, nothing but a bubble. You know what a bubble is? He says, there's nothing. Then we got disgusted and went out. Oh, 
No, they eased them out. I know I wasn't there. This is what I heard. But I think it was true because Philly and Arnold told me, and he, he ain't the guy to make things up. The Iron Horse, the other Philly and Arnold, he was quite a character. Where did he get that nickname? Well, there was a movie come out then uh, about the, the railroad locomotive, and uh, he, he used to hang around the the police station all the time, all the time, hanging around there, night and day, just spending his time there. And then the, uh, I don't know how the association, or oh, they call his, his father was a cop, they call him the Iron Horse, he was a great big Irishman, his name was Phil O'Donnell, another Phil, big Phil, the older Phil, and he was a very ugly type Irishman. He had a grudge against his own kind, against the rest of us. So he was called the Iron Horse. So it just went down like lovely Mike to young, to young Phil here. His name was Phil, you know? Phil, the Iron Horse. So yeah. the nicknames would uh, transfer from one generation uh, yeah, to another? Yeah, and then uh, like the Lambs, see? Your people's nickname. And then he, there was another brother there that uh, finally committed suicide, but they called him the Pony. Yeah. There was a the old man with the Iron Horse, the, the elderly son was the Iron Horse, and, and this guy was the Pony, he was the smallest, the youngest. So I don't know who made these, make these things up. There's all kinds of nicknames. You don't know where the hell they come from. What was the relationship, Larry, as you remember it, between the, uh, the Irish community in Portland and the, the Yankee community? that was uh, more or less in charge of the city well, as was, you were getting older? There was a lot of dislike there, of course. See, uh, they never liked the Irish anyway coming to the country. There was a lot of uh, religious bigotry there. And uh, mostly the uh, the Catholics turned a bit, mostly the working class, they turned mostly to be Democrats. And it, it, it seemed like it was a reli religious cleavage that uh, a lot of the working class Yankees were all Republican. I got some sisters in them up there. They asked me, why, why, how come you're Republican? You, uh, you know what these people stand for? Well, I don't know. They always voted Republican. So. Yes. Did, did the Irish always vote Democrat? Oh, yes. It was almost a matter of religion. There was a religious cleavage there. Yeah. Tanya's too, but later on there, uh, some of the grasping ones would see where the, where the money lie, and uh, a lot of them went on opportunists. Opportunists, yeah. Were there ever any organizations in Portland that you were aware of that were anti-Irish or anti-Catholic? Well, of course, the Ku Klux Klan was big there in the 20s. And then the 13th class, run by Harry Henry Merrill up in the hill there, and that church on the hill was certainly anti-Catholic. What can you say about that? What do you remember about well, that? Well, they were bigots. They, they, uh, get up there and sing all the Christian songs and all that junk and they never, they, uh, they were closet bigots, you know, in a way they, uh, Ku Klux Klan come right out, of course, but these people would be very cute about it, but that was the, that was the idea. What years uh, do you remember the Ku Klux Klan making <coughs> an appearance in Portland? Well, it was a year that uh, Br Brewster ran for governor, I think, one year. It must have been around the 20, 24, 25, somewhere around there. What do you remember about the Klan? Oh, we had a great big place out on Forest Avenue. Uh, at, uh, what was the name of the people that owned that? Ran the Play place out there. 
big the state with a great big electric uh, cross. And they used to parade. They had a hell of a following. It was all anti-Catholic stuff. The uh, priest said hundreds of rifles under the hog. All that real believe it, you know. How were you aware of this? You, you never it was all, the they, they made no bones about it for Christ. They publicized it, they ran, they ran meetings where they made speeches and, and printed pamphlets and it was right out the open. There was nothing secretive about it. <laughs> I've got any fines with the head of it. That went on quite a while till he got tangled up fooling around another one of their officials' wives and all that become a scandal and then started downhill. What did the well, people... Jesus, you know, that the, the people were all upset about it, yeah. Do but you remember that? They won the election. They, were, they got a big boat. They were strong. And they, Catholicism was bad then. They really believed that every... Catholic Church under the altar with guns, ammunition, and like Guy Fox in England, <laughs> gonna blow up the world. You know. <clears throat> Would you say that the Irish Catholic community in Portland was a pretty closed community? Did they try to stay among themselves? No, I don't think so. More or less, I mean, I'd say like any ethnic community is. We never, we never had, no, I don't think it was, uh, there was anything much organized there. When I was very young, there was, uh, the ancient order Hibernians used to be kind of strong. They had an organization that used to march with their, with their uniforms and swords like the Knights of Perseus that flew around us. <laughs> they died out, the Knights of Columbus come up, and they used to go in for sports and things. They were in advance. The, a the AOH was from, from the old sort of Irish. Knights of Columbus was a mixture of both. That kind of was the time to advance. Yeah. What's the AOH, Larry? Ancient Order of Hibernians. Were you ever a member of that? No, one? no. <laughs> I never even joined the Knights of Columbus. I never joined anything except the Longshore <coughs> Telephone Union. Did you? No, that was for the fact that it was dying out then. In this interview, Larry Welch is joined by Pat O'Malley, who has since died in the summer of 1988. Pat was born in Cornerone, near Inverin, County Galway, and served in the East Connemara Brigade of the Irish Republican Army in the Anglo-Irish War. After being imprisoned by the Free State Government in the early 1920s, Pat came to Portland, where he worked for nearly 50 years as a longshoreman. Larry and Pat had only seen each other in passing since the 1930s. Here they reminisce about Mike Jennings' longshore gang and recall several old longshoremen long since deceased. In the words of Pat O'Malley, they were all characters as far as I know. Pat and Larry, um, yeah. how long has it been since you've seen each other? Oh, gee, I, the last time I seen Larry was in Congress. He, he worked in the same gang I did one time. Yeah. Is it Mike Jennings? Yes, that's you right. I that's with right. Mike Jennings <laughs> quite a while. Yeah, he's a nice man. Mike. He was a good boss. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know how many years since that was. No, I that left on shore in '36 and went back with the telephone company. Yeah. That was in the forties. That was in the forties, you know. That's when Jocker came in here. That's when they yeah. changed the gangs, you know. I had Bobby Smith. I was working for the Smithy had a board down in Walk One, and Jocker had one. So I had a job with Smithy, a fellow by the name of Packy Mulkern. So Packy, yeah. yeah. And uh, he was boss for Bobby, Bobby Smith. He was an English. Bobby, you know, yeah, Bobby Smith. Joe, you know. He tend to get a lot of grain boats. So Mike Jennings boats. met me after dinner. He used to live in Bracken Street. They live in Sheer and Tingsley. 
Well, he watched it this morning. He said to me, I said, I didn't know you had any jobs. He said, so, why don't you come with me to the next board? I said, yes. So that's how I got in with him. He lived in Brackett Street there. Who were some of the other members of uh, Mike, Je Mike Jennings' gang? Can you remember? Oh, I get a lot of them. Bartley Carden and Sammy Blumenthal. Yeah. Uh, and Joe here. And his brother-in-law, Grady, Mike Grady. And the, uh, Martin Jennings. John McGovern. Father John. Father John is right. <laughs> How many old-time longshoremen are left in Portland now? <laughs> There's an early man. He and I, I guess. <laughs> Who else Just is around? about. Well, I can't remember. That tool. That yeah. tool, yeah. 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 Mr. Oswald, another smart man. He uh, fell on the ice about a year ago. He had a broken hip. Oh, he did. I huh? haven't seen him. His wife passed away. So he's got a son of freeze. St. Patrick's Chapel, in perhaps the church, rather. That's Coleman? Coleman. Coley, he worked in the Fritchett's polio, too. Before he went to the priesthood, he was uh, a longshoreman? No, he was no, he was a longshoreman. Uh, Fred, they used to Fred, Fred said the down on the wharf there. A lot of the Irish were in the West End were freight handlers up to oh, the yes, I know. freight sheds up in West Commercial Street. Yeah. Do you ever see any of the other old-time longshoremen these days? Well, uh, I used to run into Omi O'Malley, but he, he is in, in our age. He's quite a lot younger. No, there's not. He's not a, a heck of a lot of younger, I don't think, but he's younger, he's younger I than run. us. Huh? He's younger than us, I guess. Sure he is. They're all, <laughs> everybody's younger than us. <laughs> crazy. On the gang I work with, my didn't they? Mostly gone by you and me, Ashley Curran, and oh, a lot of them. Sammy Blumenthal. Sammy was a Sammy good, is, great friend of mine. Yeah. Sammy Silverman. Yes, yeah, Silverman. Silverman used to work in Portsmouth. Oh, he did. Oh yes. Yeah. He worked in the he worked in the same gang for. Oh I yes. I think he worked with with. Uh, he worked with Jennings. He worked in Jennings' yeah. gang. Buggo Naples. Oh, I work for Buggo too. You know Buggo. <laughs> no, no. He, he was, he was my drinking buddy. He was quite a character. Yeah. Italian. That's Frankie Naples' older brother. Yeah. You know Frankie, did you? Yeah. yeah. Frankie died too. You know. He did. Yeah, oh yeah. He is great. Every time I see that, they're getting up closer to us. He was the uh, walking boss for. Bobby Smith, they used to work for him. He wasn't even down there when we were there, was he? No. Well, you you, you stayed no, you no, there a lot longer than me. He, yeah. Oh, yeah, he died yeah. in 1926. Yeah. 1926, I'd been in the Union about four years. That was a good time then. Oh, it was, was, yeah. All winter we had work. We used to yeah, have... There used to be a lot of ships. Canard, yeah. White Star. Anchor Donaldson, Thompson Line. Thompson Rogers Line used to come steady. I walked the last Thompson boat that had come out of the port of Portland. Is that right? Peter, uh, what's his name, was the boss there. I probably was on a tour. What, what you could be. Here's the last Thompson boat that come out of Portland. Even though you're almost exactly the same age, yourself, uh, Larry, and Pat, you're second generation, mm. and Pat, you're first generation. Yes. Did that make any difference in Portland? I don't think so. Well, uh, way back there, there was some friction. Oh, the, the, yes, the, you the, know, the, the natives were, were thought they were a hell of a lot better than the, than the, than the ones that come from Ireland. They called yeah, them meatheads right, when right. they weren't around. There you, that was the foolishest thing. Uh, that was separated. That was change, but it's, you oh, know, yeah. it, it, it happened. It happened. It happened. It happened, that's right. They said when I was, when I went first down there, 
I, I was the only native in Coley Green's gang. Well, I worked for Coley Green, too. I worked, yeah. <laughs> and the only reason I got in there was Darby, he, he was a man shot, and I just joined the union. See, this is a steady gang. You know, oh, yes. It's quite a thing to get into it. If you got into it, you was in, but if you didn't, it was pretty you know, hard. You just Darby, like get you remember in. Darby yes, Coyne? Oh, I remember Darby, it's right. He come up the street, he call, he just go up the street and get me, get me a man, he said, a man shot. They used to wait then for the uptown boys, the Britain oh, yes, yes. to finish their work, and they'd hold the job for them, you know? And you'd fill in until they, they finished their construction, the, the inn boys. They worked for the city, city of Portland. City, you know? They Even if you work. work in that gang, you know, some of them say, you wouldn't have it. When they come back, you were done. That, yeah. that was the most crookedest law I ever heard. I, well, I squawk about that, but it didn't do me any good. Nobody backed me up. Yeah, but we fixed that later. Oh, yes, That's they did, of, yeah. If you're on the sh previous ship, you're on the list. Yeah. We fought for that and got that. One time you didn't. See, they used to, oh yeah, they used to come oh. down from Montreal. Yeah, they used to they go to Montreal. They used to go to Montreal until, uh, until the river froze. Did you know Rufus? Oh, I know Rufus. <laughs> yeah, biggest faker that was. Yeah, he was. <laughs> but he, he was a, see, the Joyce's were pretty, oh, pretty yeah, numerous. They were pretty. It wasn't a the hell of a... son there is the sheriff, you know, he was yeah. Yeah. Martin Joyce, you know, it wasn't There wasn't policeman. many O'Malley's and Welch's there, I'll tell you that. Oh, you better lie. <laughs> Some of the children of the longshoremen have done fairly well in Portland. They did, yeah. Like you just mentioned, uh, Marty Joyce. Oh, yes. What about Joe Brennan? Well, the, the priest... Yeah, I we, work had, we work with him, oh, uh, Father with Johnny. I took him a job, you know, with, with Brennan's father, you know, mm. my, Brush Connolly, I don't know, maybe you didn't know him. He worked in that gang. I, he told me to take his job for a day when the board is finished. And Cushara so Brennan, Mike? Oh, Cushara Mike, I knew him. Yeah. I brought him, I, uh, yeah, I brought him to the, the, the hall. Names he didn't, in that gang, I think. I brought the Autumn up the hall one time. He left me there. And, uh, I said, uh, you know, you could I get a job, I said, I don't care, you know, he was, I, I could, he, he could get fined for that because I was working in the gang and him and he, I, next time I knew how he, you know, they, they used to jump. pretty tricky, some of them down there, you know, they were not. They used to jump ship, what we call jump ship, you know, the inn boys, they'd work a ship and they'd be probably in the last half day and there'd be another one, big just coming in, see? And they'd quit this one. That's right, and, going and go get a job on the beginning of the other one. They used to pull that one out, and we got that law through, too. Yeah. 25 buck fine for that jumping ship business. We got a lot of those kind of laws in at that stretch there. Uh, yeah, but then the work came they out. Were, yeah, they were, <laughs> they no, had to get kicked out. Yeah. Pat, how did he get the name Kusharaga Mike? Oh, uh, well, yeah. well, he came from, you know, Kosharig, you know, they call it in Irish, you know, it's right along the, you know, right back to Clifton, you know, it's just, they used to call it, it's Kosharig, that means in English, in English, by the sea, you know, they they used to call it Kosharig, this fellow said, there's mm. no such a place. I said, that's right, it's Kosharig, that means in English, by the sea, you know. So this was the part of Ireland that he uh, or his parents had come from? Oh, yes, yes. He used to be a boss and a clear boots. There was the Kasharagas, the Connemaras, the Connemunas. Yes. The Connemunas. <laughs> and they all come from a little <laughs> different section, different like sections, East yeah. and so on. But Jesus, some, there was ill feeling there. My you oldest know, brother worked for the, the government in Clifton. Yeah. He died about a year ago. Was there he worked for the government. He was there for friction, as you remember it, between those uh, people from the different parts of yeah, the Yeah, sure. Oh, yes. oh, they call them yeah. the dirty Kashargas, the, the dirty Kanamaras. <laughs> you know, that, that yeah, parochialism yeah. stuff there. Just 
No reason, you know, really. You know, came from it was ridiculous. This guy he came from Chris Farley, and all that foolish, you know, right? Yeah. But that went out the window, you know, a long time ago. Oh, yeah. It said, say, you can't trust them Cunnamooners. That's the ones from the mountains, you know. That's where <laughs> Rufus came from. Ah, Rufus and them. Rufus was in England. The, the us yes. poor Connemaras were the poorest. Uh, we were the honest ones and the good people, yeah, yeah. wasn't we? Yes. <laughs> supposed to, supposed to be well, anyway. sure. Them Kasharigans. <laughs> the Connemunas, right. They were Rufus, smart of people, the Connemunas. Rufus, they were uh, the kind that knew enough to get a three flatter when the mm. Connemaras would be over to somebody's barroom, you know. <laughs> we, we weren't too bright there, I don't think. <laughs> about the buck. The, the bootleggers. Yeah. Did many longshoremen get to own holds? Some of them. Some. I wouldn't say too many. No. I'd say a smattering. They all seem to trend toward three feet. Any, any, any man, any of them that had steady jobs, they got hoes. The Scanlon yeah. there, you know, like Peter Scanlon, he had his hoes, and a few yeah. of them. Pat O'Toole. But Pat O'Toole never worked. He worked in the elevator, you know. Before it closed, there were quite a few of them got houses. The Joyce's you know, all. He had that steady job. The Joyce's. And he had a big, big family, King, too. Pat Davis. Davis, yeah. Davis uh, knew where a buck was. Pat Davis was a uh, nice man. Pat, yeah. yeah he was a cousin he was, of yeah. my father. He and his wife both. And uh, Pat O'Donnell. Pat O'Donnell was a was he it was, was a it, hatchman for Coley. Yeah, he where was. I a, worked. Yeah, he was a, he was he was a, a decent cousin. man. He was a nice man. Pat oh, O'Donnell was. He was, was a very, real he was, gentleman. He was a gentleman is right. He was a real good man. Yeah. What do you remember about him? I remember that I was working on a schooner of uh, lumber. Remember? Oh yes, I remember. He used to come him. in and yeah, we'd be a whole summer's is. work unloading them. Big timbers and everything coming out of the small hole, and it was a good job. Ties, yeah. And uh, we used to go across to the to the to the the cart. They would eat dinner. They all rice. Oh and yeah. Rice. Mm -hmm. And and the, the, the wharf would come down, and then there'd be about a foot drop onto the cinders. Mm -hmm. And this noon going across there, and I sprained my ankle. You Pat could, was you on the bibber line. Yeah, you know, oh yeah, line, the bibber line. would let the arm go out with the load, just sitting there with the weight on it, and he pull it back. It was an easy racket. Jesus, my ankle was, swell up. You know what Pat did? He he put me sitting there doing that, so I was able to stay working. Oh yeah, he and was he very. He went out on the truck. He was a nice man. He, he was. Now that is something. It's, you know, it ain't too many. Feliz, the son of him. Thought about himself. Feliz in, uh, Feliz in Florida. Billy. Pat, Pat O'Donnell. Oh, yeah. yeah. Billy and I yeah. went, went to Europe together. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you. That's where I got this foolish thing. He <laughs> got one, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Phil, we both shipped out. It was nice. You always gave me a clay dog. How old were you, Larry, when you went off to Europe? 17. That's what I'm just saying. He really? was he was a little he was younger than me even. He was he's probably just barely a little better than sixteen. I think Larry's around here. Sometimes you Larry? know. Yeah. Larry? Yeah. Larry lost track of him. No, he was flawed. He used to he's got a house here somewhere. He did, yeah. He, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Does he come down to the summer or not? He's got a boy that's retarded. Hmm. I used to go to that sweets of school. Yeah, and the younger guy, Doc, he died over in the... Oh, yes, he Doc. On he did. Out and he got the cholera the, somewhere. I remember that he went out in a grain boat. And that yeah. was the end of Doc, one, yeah. One, one boat, so I never worked a grain boat. I, I, did a, I did some bagging. Yeah, bagging was nice. Blocking out and all that, I stayed away from that. The well, they they had nothing the, for you, no respirator, no... They had them at the, they, they, they did it at the end of it. You put your handkerchief over your mouth, that's all. <laughs> we would go in it anyway. Would you say it was dangerous work? Of course it was. Dangerous. Jesus, I, I almost got killed a couple of, at least three times. When, uh, when I was on the double whip there, was over the hatch for Philly O'Donnell, yeah. and I was on the 
throw on the, the hook? Yeah, I mean, that throw on the hook, yeah. That's, what's a, see, double, that's a double they, whip is where they, they work used to call up that and double down. Whip, mm -hmm. Make more work. That yeah, was they, tough, you know, to throw that hook, you know, sometimes. You, yeah, I, You had to be pretty accurate that. with that. There's a trick to it. There was a trick to it. You just let it hang there and just win it. And see, the, uh, <laughs> the in boys didn't think that the natives could do it, you know. Oh, yeah, they thought it wouldn't be that Sammy. many. <laughs> what happened to you, Larry, when you were doing the double whip? Well, they had, you see, there's, there's, uh, there's two up and downs, and there's one over shore. That's three winches, and usually there's only two winches to a hatch. See, unless they use a drum end, see, and the drum ends, and the, and they had to use a winch in, in uh, this was a yeah, so they number had, two hole. Yeah, they did. And up there was a winch in number number one that they were using too, the three winches. And that fella there couldn't see. I'm the, I'm the hatchman too, oh, yeah. and, throwing a hook, and I, I give him the signal, see. So there's two of these going up and down. Mm -hmm. Then the one ashore comes and back. And walk. And I was moving out to tell them that they, uh, the boss wanted them to, to dig more up this way. See, it was China clay. Yeah. And I forgot about the one coming back from there. From uh, and th that, uh, one of the winchmen saw what was happening, and he 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 uh, couldn't. Uh, Go, or go, or I couldn't have hold it or something. Anyway, the bucket yeah. come back and hit the. You know, you've seen the the Coleman's over, but that high over the ship, steel, yeah. and a big bucket. You know, great big iron and was dangerous bucket. too down the hole. And I was telling them then. I was just out where that was going to come. It's usually, it's up in the air, but for some some reason. One of the winches, one of the winchmen could see that I was in the way, and he eased up. And what happened? Just at just at the last second, I moved up where I should be, and that hit those Coleman. Oh yeah! I would have been smashed right to the end. Were there serious injuries longshore that you were? Somebody. Uh, Pat Davis. What? They were. They used to have the tubs down, you know, and they were digging. They dig too deep, and. This Frank O'Toole's brother got suffocated. You know, the pile come on, a pile of clay. The pile know. caved in, yeah, yeah then before in, uh, my they, time. They, they were digging down too, too uh -huh. much, you know, and they lifted high, and he got suffocated. That was in 19, oh, do you, 19? Yeah, before I was there. Yeah. One good friend of mine got killed down there, Tony Catoni, or the Oh, well, I heard about Tony? him, yeah, he oh, did, yeah. yeah. He, Carelessly, it was a shot hatch, but that shot was in the wrong place on the beams, you know, and the whole, the lower hole was all empty. They were putting the stuff on the twin decks. Jesus, that let go, and he went down about 20, 20 feet. He must have John broke his back or something because he only lasted about two hours. John Coyne lost his leg, didn't he? Remember Jack Pat Cullen? Davis lost the Pat, leg. Yeah, so did Cole Brian. Green got all smashed yeah, up. Yeah. Mike Major got all smashed <coughs> up. Right in the same gang I was in. I mean, even the captain of one of those uh, Thompson or Ranker Donaldson fell down his old hole one noon time. Yeah, well, and some some fellow used to be a walking boss. He fell down. And that was the end of him. He was, not, he was Irish. I forget his name. That'd the grandson. Before my time, maybe. Yeah, he, I wasn't in the Union then. He fell down. He was walking around. Pepper Gulliver, I never heard from him. I don't know what that yeah. what he... Remember Willie Gulliver? Gulliver? That's he's his brother. <laughs> huh? Willie, this, this, this was uh, Tommy, his, uh, his brother. Oh, yeah. Cousin of yeah. Willie, yeah. Willie was quite a boy. He was. <laughs> he was a... Uh, <laughs> He was a good guy for the Union, though. But yeah, he nicknames for everybody. What do you remember of the nicknames, Pat? Oh, this fellow, Jaisy, died. Uh, uh, Walter Jais, Willie Pep. You know, we used to call him Willie Pep. This Willie girl, and, and he was kind of lame, you know, a limping. Stepper Fletcher, we used to call him. <laughs> Fletcher, yeah, you remember him? He was an actor. 
Step they thought fetching. he's coming. Who is coming? You know who is coming. <laughs> Step and fetch him. <laughs> what about Gorvin? Did he have a nickname? Uh, no, no. Willie Pep. They used to call him Willie uh, Pep. Uh, yeah. Dustpan Willie. Dustpan Willie. Worked for yeah, the yeah. post office on the maintenance. They called him Dustpan Willie. Yeah. His name he, was w William. Is he the same as the church mouse? No, no. He used to be Argon all, all the time. He was, a, he was quite a union man. He used to be Argon all the time. Why did they all have nicknames? <laughs> I don't know. They used to call me White Hope. What did they call you? White Hope. They used to call uh, Matty McDonough White Hope. I don't yeah, know. They used to call Big Matty Steve. McDonough the little guy. Oh, yeah, that's the yeah. white man's hope. I don't know. I never had a you know Big Steve or Donald? Big Steve. Yeah, he used to, uh, he three called me. Wait, oh, get out of the way. He used to be over the hatch. Watch Jesus yourself. Christ Don't let that change. He was a tough little cookie. Mm, he never was. Quit her, never quit. He he'd was in the John, beginning. And, and he'd, he'd fight beat. John. He, he, he would fight John. Huh? He was a tiger. He would fight John. He'd always, you know, I seen him chasing Pat Davis down the state pier. <laughs> And he wasn't any more than, he, was, he hey. wasn't five feet. Were there other characters that you remember along the, uh, in <laughs> the Portland <laughs> community? There were all characters as far as I know, <laughs> the majority of them. Do you remember the Japine? The little, little guy working the clay boat all the time, they call him the Japine for some yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. Characters. Tom Shaw was a character. Eric the Red, they called him. Tom Shaw? Uh, he, yeah, he was, first he was a telegrapher for the Western Union. You you remember Bill Shaw. Who was oh, yes, Alderman. Billy, he was, a, he was a checker? Yeah, yeah. well, his brother, Tom, he was, oh, a, yeah, he was yeah, quite, yeah. A, quite a drunk in the end. They called him Eric the Red, he had red hair, I don't know, I think. Big Ira, remember Big Ira? Oh, Admiral Cullen. He just died last year. Oh, yes, yeah. just from that, he is. Uh, Mike. Do you remember Lovely Mike, the father? I do. He, if you call him Lovely Mike, he was, we quite, him well. he was quite a boy. Where did he get that nickname, Larry? He That's was a good-looking man, you know. They made up a lot of stories about him. Oh, yeah. I yes. don't know for sure myself, because <laughs> he had the name before I ever knew him, even. All them gigs are gone, the Lord says. Yes, God be good to their souls, that's all I can say to them. <laughs> like Big Marcus says, somebody asked them. Oh, <laughs> that's all rushed in peace. Somebody asked Big Marcus or Frank Tool, I don't know which, somebody. Where, uh, somebody he knew, I think it was one of the mates on the ship or the captain on the, on the schooner, and I asked him, where's, uh, what's his name there, you know, Mike this or that. Oh, he says, he, we were out uh, working up on the schooner or the clay boat. He says, he's about a, about a mile or so up over that hill. You know uh, <laughs> what he finally meant? Calvary Cemetery. <laughs> that's, that's, where he, that's where he is. Oh, right. <laughs> <clears throat> very, very, very funny. He's a funny guy, lovely Mike says. He's a funny guy. Oh. Do that on purpose, you know. Remember the Shagger Foley? Oh, Shagger Foley. Shagger uh, and, and Big. Were there other characters that you remember along the uh, in the <laughs> Portland community? There were all characters as far as I know, <laughs> the majority of them. Extraordinary.